back. He's looking. Just sheer power. That's what he's all about. Eric Rask meets him head on. Just pull rush. Just power. Hold on. Hampshire gets him in the backfield. Watch out! He will go! And intercepted. They're going looking left. Throwing left. End zone! And a touchdown! Penn! Wow! The 2011 season for the University of Pennsylvania Quakers was more than a celebration of Al Bagnoli's 20th season, or a final chapter for a heralded senior class. Following back-to-back -back undefeated Ivy League seasons, after collecting two Ivy League titles, the Quaker tradition of winning continued on record pace. The 2011 presented new challenges, memories to be made and never forgotten. The Quakers showed resilience in their league opener versus Dartmouth, one of Penn's four national TV games. A Penn defense that has not allowed an opening drive touchdown in 33 games remained impervious to the big green attack. The Quakers' second-ranked run defense was led by Rask, a finalist for the Bushnell Cup as Ivy League MVP. Matthews pass deflected, then intercepted by Rask, breaks free to the 20, 15, 10, 5, Eric Rask, a touchdown for the senior on senior day. His relentless spirit guided him toward the football. A student at the Wharton School of Business, Rask made it his trade to corral ball carriers collecting 83 tackles in his senior season. For his career, Rask finished with 190 defensive stops. As leader of the Penn defense, Rask commanded a rising star in a first-team all-league selection, Brandon Copeland. Only a junior, Copeland has been a first-team selection two years in a row and has yet to show any limit to his upside. At six foot three, 260 pounds, Copeland took his game to another level in 2011 with 51 tackles, two sacks, and six tackles for loss. Copeland made his presence felt in the Ivy League and started his menacing season with a bang versus Dartmouth. Now a little wildcat of footballs up and it's in for a touchdown. Penn will take it in. Tim McManus came in, took the snap, was hit, and Brandon Copeland scores, and Penn comes through defensively. Despite Copeland's first career touchdown, the Quakers trailed by four in the game's final moments, a moment seized by quarterback Billy Rago. On a 13-play, 89-yard drive, Ragon would complete all eight of his passes. The final throw, with 17 seconds remaining, put Penn back on the winning track. We're going looking left, throwing left, end zone, bobbled, and touchdown, Penn! What a grab by Ryan Calvert, and the Quakers take the lead with 17 seconds to go in the fourth. One pass defined this game. The Quakers' 13th victory over Dartmouth in their last 14 meetings. One pass and a vast catalog of Quaker triumphs. The Quakers opened Ivy League play in fashion and finished the trip home the same way. Flying in style on a charter flight. To search through Penn football history, you must sift through 1,322 games, more than any other program in the country. To canvas Al Bagnoli's resume, you must review 101 Ivy League wins, the most among active coaches and second most in league history. His teams have ravaged Ivy foes, recording the three longest winning streaks versus league opponents in Ivy history. 
Magnoli's teams have epitomized the term champion during his two decades at Penn, as he is the only Ivy coach to have claimed eight outright league titles. And there's your ball game as Penn gets to celebrate the victory. He is just one of six coaches in the history of the FCS subdivision to reach more than 200 career wins. Down he goes! Turner and Tolton there, and Penn will take over on downs. And Bagnoli is the winningest coach in the 135-year history of Penn football. A chance to play for Bagnoli is one of the many reasons student athletes from around the country flocked to Philadelphia. They came from Clear Lake, Iowa, and Studio City, California, from Royal City, Washington, and South Lake, Texas. From many states, these players become one Quaker family, destined for victory like hundreds in red and blue before them. Versus Fordham, their hearts were united behind running back Lyle Marsh. Marsh, a second-year All-Ivy selection as a freshman, missed nearly his entire sophomore year with an injury. With number one back Brandon Colavita sidelined, the now junior Marsh carried Penn's offense and the Fordham defense. He's gonna have the first down, he's plowing towards the end zone and he's in, touchdown Quakers! Behind Marsh's three touchdowns, Penn earned a 35-20 win. Colavita would return the following week against Columbia, surpassing 1,000 yards for his career. When the Quakers leaned on their running game, they often looked to their 5'9", 220-pound back. Now they'll run out of the eye, they'll give it to Calavita. He is a tough load, oh boy, he can run the football. For the second year in a row, Calavita was an All-Ivy selection, ranking fifth in the league with 665 yards rushing. That is Calavita with the ball, and that is a first down and more. Calavita's gone. 24 yards for Bam Calavita. Colavita's fearless style set the tempo for a Penn offense that could ground and pound with the best in the league. Now we no longer have to explain why his nickname is Bam. He just bounces off the linebacker, Wes Moyer. As Colavita was brute, Jeff Jack was shifty. Far left, stays on his feet, pushing to the end zone. He's in for a Quaker touchdown. A junior from Washington, Jack evaded defenders in the run and pass games. This Penn offense is running downhill right now, knocking people backwards. But to beat the Lions for the 15th straight time, it would require heroics from Penn's quarterback. Tied to 20, Magone targeted Calvert three times, driving the Quakers down to the seven-yard line with 25 seconds left. Then, Ragone called his own number. Billy across the five, and a steam across the goal line for a Quaker touchdown. The 27-20 win over Columbia marked Penn's 12th straight Ivy League road win, tying a school record. Winning is a habit that has turned viral on the Penn campus for its football program. The athletic administration has fed this gridiron giant for the past 20 years, providing the Quakers with some of the best facilities in the country. When you look around, you see a state-of-the-art weight room that can house the entire football squad at once. Magnificent training facilities that ensures the proper care of their athletes. And Penn's indoor facility located in Penn Park right behind their locker room and Franklin Field. This complex guarantees to provide the proper teaching and practice environment, regardless of the weather. These facilities have helped produce countless weapons that have wreaked havoc on their opponents. In 2011, Ragon proved to be one of those weapons. First and 10 for Penn, and they'll go to the air. 
With 18 touchdowns and 2,284 total yards, Ragone completed the fifth most prolific offensive season in the history of Quaker football. Keeping it, Ragone cutting back, Ragone shifting, Ragone, Billy Ragone somehow weaved his way through a host of white jerseys. For Billy across the five, head of steam across the goal line for a Quaker touchdown. Ragone's 1,860 yards passing were the most by a Penn quarterback in five years. And his favorite target was first team all Ivy receiver, Ryan Calvert. We're going with a quick hit to Ryan Calvert, one of his favorites, and Calvert has enough for the first down. A senior, Calvert hauled in five touchdowns and ranked second in the Ivy with 58 receptions. His 641 yards were fourth most in the league. Ryan Calvert in the end zone, touchdown. When defense keyed on Calvert, sophomore wideout Ryan Mitchell made them pay. A sophomore out of Illinois, Mitchell averaged more than 15 yards per catch and finished with 587 yards and three scores. Billy, a fade, near sideline in the end zone, caught for a touchdown. Senior Joe Holder also provided a steady pair of hands to the Quaker core. Batted up in the air and Joe Holder came back down with it. Then zone, bobbled and touchdown, Penn! The Quaker aerial attack was on display against Yale. Bagnoli's 100th game at Franklin Field. In Penn's 18th straight win over an Ivy League opponent, a streak second only in league history to a 20-game run by Penn from 2001 to 2004, Ragone paved the way for another victory with 236 yards and three passing touchdowns, including one to Holder. Near sideline of the end zone, caught for a touchdown! Colavita reached a new career high with 156 yards on the ground in a 37-25 win, as Ragone also surpassed 100 yards and Bagnoli's 15th win over Yale in 20 tries. The victory was Penn's fourth straight in the month of October, a month when Bagnoli's teams have won more than 75% of their games in his 30-year career. In mid-season form, the Quakers amassed 552 total yards and 27 fourth quarter points, showing they were, as always, ready to compete in meaningful playoff type games in November. Challenging for the top spot in the Ivy League standings every year, stellar offensive line play has always pushed the Quakers to the summit. All season, Penn's backs were aided by a highly acclaimed offensive line, and their leader was senior Greg Van Roten. Van Roten finished his Penn career with back-to-back -back first team all Ivy selections, starting 28 consecutive games at guard or tackle. Ragone's blindside protector was right tackle Joe Bonadiz. A junior, Bonadiz anchored an offensive line that allowed only 14 sacks. Tight end Luke Naraki, an all Ivy selection for a second consecutive season was often the sixth man on the line for the Quakers, but provided a reliable safety valve in the pass game for Ragone. With solid blocking up front, Penn was the Ivy League's best red zone team and ranked third in scoring offense. Before more than 17,000 fans at Franklin Field, for Penn's homecoming against Princeton, Van Roten and the senior class went out with a bang. Senior Ryan Calvert hauled in the longest reception of his career, a 